So if you go to tytaa8.com, go to service, go to downloads, the firmware also contains the CPS, which is the computer programming software, which allows you to add channels, edit channels, move channels, click things. It's a nice feature-packed program for free. And here's where you can find the Chirp software, chirp.danplanet.com forward slash projects forward slash chirp forward slash wiki forward slash download. If you get a notice icon message after you have Chirp up and it tells you that there's a newer version available, go ahead and download it. Chirp is really great. It's free. You know, donate to them if you can't afford it. Uh, it's a really great program. It works with thousands of radios. Here's a screenshot of my desktop icons, or part of them, for my ham radio section of the corner. Look at which ones pop out. The TH UV88 kind of pops out. Chirp is kind of bland. Any tones are uh, a little colorful, but anyways, just want to give you an idea what you're going to be looking at. And on your desktop, you're left with this fancy little chirp icon symbol. Hi, hi. To program this radio, you're going to need either the FTDI cable or an older cable. Whether your computer is Windows 10, you're going to want the FTDI. If it's Windows 7 or older, you could use just a regular uh, USB to two-prong plug. But anyways, you're going to need a cable to program it. Yeah, I guess you could do it by hand, but... This is the quickest, simplest, foolproof method to get what you want in there, where you want it. Compared to Chirp, I actually like the TYT THUV88 software. It's plain, it's simple, it's straightforward. There's no hidden menus. Everything's right there on the tabs on the left. Everything's right here in front of you. That's what you get. That's all you get. <laughs> but it's simple, it's easy, it's quick. Let's look at the UV88. File, new, open, save, save as, exit, program. You can read, write, program code. I don't know what that is. I haven't tried that. Settings, select COM port, bit rate, and help tells you version 1.77. But it's really simple. So let's go to there, go to open, and import my code plug. And there we go. You need to make any changes. Got the number zero through or one through two hundred or one ninety nine. Receive frequency, transmit frequency, decode. That's coming out of a repeater or somebody sent it to you if it's a simplex channel. Encode is a turn on the repeater, open up a repeater. Scramble function. I don't know what you're going to use that for. Definitely not a amateur radio thing. Power for simplex. I got programmed high. Busy channel lockout. I got off. Frequency step. So if I want to tune the tuning uh, steps on the front of the radio. They go in uh, 2.5 steps. I got it set for wide, which is uh, 25 hertz. Signal off. I don't know what signal is. And uh, channel name, national simplex calling frequency for 2 meters. It gives you a simple little overview of how simple that program is. So here I added two channels. I put a receive and a transmit tone on them. For the two local repeaters, I think they both have some kind of transmit tone. And then where I have the big bold red line up in the left hand corner, that little symbol, you can hit that to save your work as you progress. So here's the TYT TH UV88 software. After, I don't know, 15 20 minutes of programming, walking away, coming back, I have 21 channels into it. So it's quick, it's simple, it's easy. I like this. This VFO tab is kind of funny. You have the 150 MHz, 220, even though radio is not capable of that, 450, 150 again, which is 144, 148, 220 again, and 440. So I set some frequencies in here, left the rest of the stuff alone. Not sure really what it does, but maybe if we go to VFO mode down the road, maybe that's where it comes into play. Never know how these Chinese uh, think. <laughs> It's like backwards engineered. So here under settings, basic settings, we have the priority transmit. I have it set for the main channel. Box level, it's not activated, but set for three. That's a factory default. Squash level, I set as one. 
dual standby watch enabled LED display I want on backlight color 4 keypad beeps enabled yes timeout timer 180 seconds and the rest I have uh, next to disabled and then I have battery save one to one LED display name is the name so if I have a repeater named Killington V for VHF that's what it shows you know I did not try to put a asterisk in there but if you look at the first one any 01001 asterisk 001 you know, this would be useful for, like, say, an all-star node or an auto patch. Here we're taking a look at the two-tone. Probably set for a commercial application. <laughs> I don't know why the first tone is 666, the sign of the devil, but the second tone is 2222, and you can change that to any configuration you want to match your needs if you want right here. And then you just hit enter, and then file, and then save, and write it to your code plug. Only thing I can think of five tone would be like a paging system, hospitals, uh, fire departments. I think you use five tones. I don't know where else you would use five tone, but you can see you got your encode and decode as well. As you know, hopefully you've seen my video by now. If not, go back and check it out. The TYT THUV88 is capable of receiving your local FM radio station. So, if you're out hunting, fishing, hiking, camping, well, maybe not hunting. <laughs> Uh, you could listen to your favorite radio station, and then when something on the handbands uh, comes on, whatever you have set in the VFOs, uh, it goes back to that. And then when that traffic is done, it goes back to here. So here's that tab, and here's some of the local ones I have in there. And you could do what you want uh, for your local favorites. If we go to the belt symbol, this is version 1.17 for the UV88. It looks like they did this June 13, 2020. Uh, I got this radio about June 3rd or 4th, uh, 2021, so looks like the software is a little bit uh, aged, but uh, still works perfectly fine. And it's the latest grade, so there is no more updates for this. Just want to make mention that keep decode off. Unless you're in a metropolitan area, big city area, where there's two repeaters that are conflicting in an area, and the repeater owner tells you to put a decode tone on, that way your radio opens up to only a specific tone, and not listening to repeaters competing for uh, pick a fencing uh, capture effect, uh, you normally keep decode off. Okay, let's take a quick look. I can't get screenshots of these. So we go to File, we got New, Open, Open Stock, Config, Recent, Save, Save as Load Module, Import, Export, Close, Quit, Edit. It'll bring us there. View, Radio, there's you can download from Radio, Import from Data Source. And these ones here, a bunch of different frequencies for different parts of the country, railroad, marine, those PMR frequencies, that's for like overseas, UK business, uh, where is it, I think it's that PMR channel, like UHF, uh, like CB frequencies, used over in like, uh, I think it's uh, Australia or something like that, but anyways. Put all that stuff into there, and then that KD4RR. Let's click on that. I'm trying to hold the camera and do the same time. So the KD4R, whatever it is, comes up with a bunch of simplex frequencies. I think you can't put those in there yourself. You don't know those. Some of those look more like repeater frequencies, so I don't know what the hell a guy's doing, but don't know him, don't know him from Adam, don't know the rhyme or reason, so anyways, that's what's in there. The Chirp browser gives you some useful features if you're familiar with computer programming, hex keys, things like that. I will say this once, and I'll probably say it again later in the video, but I steer clear out of this area. I'm not a hacker, I'm not a tweaker, this is one area I steer clear of. So here in the chirp browser work mode settings 
Okay, you're going to have your hex decimal bin keys. I don't know any of this language. I don't dare change it. And I recommend you don't change anything in here unless you know absolutely, positively, 100% you know what you're doing. Here's a general overview display of what you get, what you can see in Chirp. You can see the frequency, the name, if you're so inclined to put one in, the tone, the uh, decode tone, tone squelch, DCS tones, DTCS receive tones, uh, cross mode if you're going to do anything like that, duplex, offsets, the modes, wide FM is 25 KCs, uh, and then the power levels. Regardless of what your program you're going to use, I'm in the TYT UV88 program. As soon as you hook up your radio to the cable, install your drivers. I'm not going to show you how to do that. You can figure that out. I know you're smart enough. I'm going to read from the radio. I can't read from the radio here because I don't have it hooked up. Then you're going to open up your code plug if you already have one created, whatever else. And you're going to hit the little right icon, whether it's in Chirp or here in the UV88 software. You're going to write it to the radio. When the radio resets and you get the code up on the screen here, well, that is everything's okay. Shut the radio off, disconnect the cable, turn the radio back on, and if you programmed everything correctly, you should be good to go. That's as simple as programming. I've tried to go into more depth and detail about the actual program software itself than showing you how to program. I figured you can do that. You can learn that. I know you're smart. We're all smart. You know, you learn by somebody showing you, and that's how I learned and years ago, and, you know, you'll learn as well. So, anyways, please like, share, subscribe. Don't forget to hit that bell notification for future videos. Use our Amazon link for any and all purchases off Amazon. Bridgecom affiliate link for any amateur radio products there. And please support us on Patreon.com forward slash Simply Ham Radio. Thank you, 7-3 guys and ladies.